We're now going to talk about how to diagnose either an anterior or posterior hemiblock by looking at an EKG tracing. So the simplest method, the one I use, is the following. For an anterior hemiblock, number one, you must have left axis deviation. And it's actually quite significant, oftentimes greater than negative 45 degrees. And number two, you get this little R wave and deep S wave, which can sometimes also be widened in leads 2, 3, and AVF. So how can we remember that? Well, we draw this funny looking letter A for anterior over the limb leads, which tells us that the inferior limb leads, 2, 3, and AVF are what we should be looking at. So here we find a little r and a deep S. Now, if it's just a pure hemiblock, the QRS is unwidened, but a concomitant conduction disease exists, for example, a person with a right bundle branch block, then the S can look wider. So anterior hemiblocks, number one, you must have left axis deviation. And number two, you're going to have little r, deep S waves in 2, 3, and ABF. Posterior hemiblocks, they're much less common, but just as simple to detect on EKG. Two things. Number one, you must have right axis deviation. Now, not many things cause a right axis deviation, and we'll go over these causes later, but a key point is to make the diagnosis, you must rule out those other causes first. And now, secondly, we have RS morphology in leads 1 and AVL. Now, how do I remember that? Well, by drawing a funny looking P for posterior. And why look at these leads? Well, we want to rule out a high lateral wall MI. So, if that's present, you'd have Q waves in leads 1 and AVL. So a high lateral wall MI would have Q waves in leads 1 and AVL, which we do not see here. So, number one, right axis deviation. Number two, RS morphology in leads 1 and AVL, as well as exclusion of all other causes of right axis deviation. So it's really that simple. So these diagrams here show us the conduction system of the heart, the AV node, the His bundle, which then branches into the right and left bundles, and a key point is the left bundle branch divides into the anterior and posterior fascicles, which is how we get anterior and posterior hemiblocks, respectively. Now, the right bundle branch does not have subdivisions. Since the left bundle branch is upstream from the anterior and posterior fascicles, you can never have a left bundle branch block with an anterior or posterior hemiblock. It just doesn't make sense. On the other hand, right bundle branch blocks in combination with either an anterior or posterior hemiblock is actually quite common. And that's a key point. Right bundle branch block plus left axis deviation means you probably have an anterior hemiblock. And you will see this. Whereas posterior hemiblocks, which are actually quite rare in general, um, do occur and you would probably see something like a right bundle branch block and right axis deviation. But I want you to focus on the right bundle branch block plus left axis deviation means you probably have an anterior hemiblock. So what's a trifascicular block? Well, that's actually a, a misnomer, right? I mean, that person would be dead. Look at that. Nothing would get through. So a trivesicular block is actually, number one, uh, first degree AV node conduction delay, number two, a right bundle branch block, and number three, either an anterior or posterior hemi block. So here are the causes of right axis deviation. Again, there's not many. These first few are non-pathologic up until uh, right ventricular overload, which in the acute setting can be caused by pulmonary embolisms and chronically by COPD and right ventricular hypertrophy, which has various causes such as uh, valvular regurgitation and uh, pulmonary hypertension. And then finally, we have a lateral wall myocardial infarctions, usually higher up, and as we already mentioned, left posterior vesicular blocks. So uh, key points, um, left anterior and posterior hemiblocks can be um, diagnosed pretty easily using EKG tracings. You only have to look at the limb leads. LAD must be present for an anterior hemiblock. RAD must be present for a posterior hemiblock. And uh, that's it. So thanks for joining me, and I hope this was of some use. Good luck, and so long.